OK, we're now going to look at another physiological theory of crime. So this comes under AC 2.1, describing biological theories of crime. Once again, I'm going to also bring in AC 3.2, which is to evaluate the theory, and also AC 4.1, which is going to look at how the theory informs policy development. And we are going to look particularly, we've already looked at the physiological theory of Lombroso, and now we're going to look at the physiological theory of Sheldon. So it's a biological theory. Again, it's physiological. So biological theories basically believe that criminality, criminal, criminals are biologically different from other peoples. And, it, and it's this difference, this biological difference that causes them to commit a crime. And we're going to look at the physiological theory of William Sheldon. Again, just a reminder that physiological theories are claiming that the physical characteristics of criminals differ from non-criminals. So without further ado, let's look at what Sheldon said. So there he is, William Sheldon, um, 1898 to 1977. And basically his theory concerns body shape, which is known as a somatotype. I cannot stress enough that you have got to know this word for the exam. So it's Sheldon and somatotypes. And there are three different somatotypes that you need to know the names of. His theory is quite straightforward, so easy to do. Nice one to get if you ask asked about a biological theory, because it's also easy to evaluate. But technical words you have to know. So Sheldon was an American psycholog a psychologist, a doctor, a physician, and he argued that criminal behaviour is linked to a person's physical form. So whereas Lombroso was looking at atavistic physical traits, he's looking at body shape more. So here are his key ideas, which I'll look at in more detail as we go. So he believed that the bodily build of someone was linked to personality and temperament. So your body shape is linked to your personality and therefore linked to your temperament. And he um, looked at photographs showing the front, back and side views of 4,000 scantily clothed men. And Sheldon put forward from these photos that basically there were three different body types or somatotypes. So a body type is a somatotype. And he argued that one of these three somatotypes was more likely to engage in criminal activity. So you need to know the names of the somatotypes and you need to know which one is the one that Sheldon said was more likely to engage in criminal activity. So let's look at these. So the first somatotype is the ectomorph. And here's a picture of an ectomorph here. So Sheldon categorized an ectomorph body type as being thin and fragile narrow shoulders and hips, thin and narrow face with a high forehead, very little body fat, and he believed that an ectomorph was introverted, thoughtful, inhibited, and sensitive. His second somatotype was the endomorph. Here we see the endomorph. Endomorphs are physically quite round, they are fat and soft, tend to have wide hips, narrow shoulders, makes them have a more pear-shaped body. And he believed that endomorphs were relaxed, sociable, even-tempered and extroverted. His final somatotype was this one, the mesomorph. A mesomorphs are muscular, hard-bodied, have very little fat, have strong limbs, broad shoulders, narrow waists, they're adventurous, sensation seeking, they're assertive, domineering, and they enjoy physical activity. And Sheldon used a correlation study, and he found that many criminals prone to committing violent and aggressive act were mesomorphs. So they're more likely to be mesomorphic and they are least likely to be ectomorphic. So mesomorphic is your criminal shape and ectomorphic is your least criminal shape. So here we see a classic mesomorph. This is Charles Bronson, one of the most dangerous criminals in the UK today. 
he would conform to the mesomorphic view of uh, Sheldon. And here we see Daniel Radcliffe, even though he's got muscle, he's still an ectomorph. He's thin, uh, he's not very broad. So uh, Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter, is likely not to be criminal, according to uh, Sheldon. So he used that sample of photographs of college students and delinquents. He rated them on a scale of one for low criminality to seven high criminality and their resemblance to mesomorphy. And the results show that your delinquent had a higher mesomorphy rating of 4.6 than the college students of 3.8. Remember, when we looked at Lombroso, one of his problems was um, in his theory that he didn't have a control group. Sheldon does, and he does find a correlation. So a reanalysis uh, by Hart et al. Uh, in 1982 also found the most seriously delinquents of Sheldon's sample had a mean mesomorphy rating of five. So this did add further support to the theory. And here we see another two classic mesomorphs, the Cray twins, violent gangsters, uh, in written in the 60s, 70s, etc. And um, again, they would conform to the mesomorphic trait. So that's the theory, quite straightforward. Three body types, one more prone, one less prone to criminality. Mesomorph is your criminal, ectomorph is less likely to be. So let's evaluate it. So let's look at these strengths. Well, there is supporting evidence that shows an association between body build and criminality. So put when the Simmons in 2002 found this, notice it is a small association, it's not everything. Nevertheless, there is a correlation. And that's good because Gluck and Gluck in 1956 found in their research in a sample of delinquents that 60% were mesomorphs, while in a non-delinquent sample it was only 31%. So there is, you know, um, put Wayne and Sammons in 2002 reinforced Gluck and Gluck's findings that mesomorphy does seem to imply criminality. And it's a good sized sample that's used. Sheldon had a control condition, as I stated before, of non-offenders to compare the results uh, to, whereas Lombroso, in his, pre, in his physiologic theory, didn't have whatsoever. And it would also be true to say that the most serious delinquents in Sheldon's sample were the ones with, extre with the most extremely mesomorphic body shapes. So there is a link, without a doubt. How strong a link it is remains to be seen. So there's your strengths. But now let's look at the weaknesses. Gluck and Gluck found that criminality was best explained, and this is key, not by biology alone, but by a combination of biological, psychological and environmental factors. Biological theories are saying it is all nature that leads to criminality. Gluck and Gluck found a correlation between nature and criminality, but said, hang on a moment, it's not just nature, it is also nurture. Nurture plays a point. It's a combination between the two. One of the weaknesses of biological theories is they are discounting nurture whatsoever, um, completely. So Gluck and Gluck, whilst they see a correlation, don't say it's the only correlation, and that's important. It's not just biology. And of course, the most significant weakness, I think, of Sheldon's um, theory is that not all criminals have mesomorph body shapes. This is Dennis Nielsen, one of our most uh, notorious serial killers. If anything, he's an ectomorph, so that would seem to disprove Sheldon's ideas. So it's limited to theory. It doesn't explain how ectomorphs and indeed endomorphs can also be criminals. There's lots of ectomorphs, lots of endomorphs that are criminals. So sorry, Sheldon, there's a weakness there. Um, it also doesn't take into account that one's somatotype isn't fixed. People's bodies do change throughout their lives. And therefore, you could argue if the body shape changed, then surely the criminality changes. So therefore, Sheldon's theory doesn't have credence. It's not a useful theory of criminality. Further weaknesses. You can also argue that criminals may develop a mesomorphic build as a result of needing to be physically tough to succeed. So if so, 
actually criminality causes the somatotype rather than somatotype causing the criminality. And this then links into the idea of social class, because actually you could argue that social class could be the true cause both of offending and of mesomorphy. Convicted offenders are mainly working class males, so they're more likely to be doing manual jobs such as these, where they are more likely to acquire an athletic mesomorphic type build. So the correlation is there, but for a completely different reason. And of course, another weakness, if people make assumptions about others on the basis of appearance, then some people are more likely to be assumed to be criminal by juries and the police. And this can result in them being treated more harshly, increasing the likelihood that actually they then become labelled as a criminal when actually they aren't. So you create a self-fulfilling prophecy. So this then links us on to AC 4.1, where we look at how the theory has informed policy development. Again, not too much for Sheldon. It's very similar to Lombroso. Uh, we're looking at how the theory has influenced how society controls crime, deals with criminals. And I think, again, like Lombroso, Sheldon's influence is much more general than specific when it comes to policy development. Um, it's influenced, again, the emergence of offender profiling. And again, it links back to that idea of the death penalty. If you believe that criminals are born that way, then that's going to influence the death penalty. As I said, rather candidly, there's little point in trying to rehabilitate criminals if you can't. If the whole cause is biological, better to save money, kill them, use the death penalty.